My Tinder date brought their dead mother to my house. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. Like many other unfortunate souls, my non-existing dating life has turned me to the dating apps. This particular one is from Tinder. I'd been chatting with this guy a few days and everything was going swimmingly. We had so much in common and were looking for the same things. His pictures were cute and he didn't live too far away. All seemed well. I invited him over to grill out some burgers in my backyard. He asked if he could bring anything. I said, sure, bring some bacon for the burgers. He agreed and said he'd be over soon. Given his distance, I expected him to be over in about 15 minutes. I started the grill and seasoned the burgers. Half an hour later, he messaged me. I've driven by a couple times and chickened out. Are you sure you want me to come over? Maybe a red flag, but I just chalked it up to nerves and just said, come on, I'm hungry. So this haggard looking guy shows up much different than his Cedric picture. That's all right, I can move past that. From the minute he walked up, and I kid you not, he did not take a breath. Within the first five minutes, I knew his life story from his aunt who hated their grandma to his father who likes to collect taxidermy. Not a single breath. Again, I figured he was just nervous. I put the burgers on and when they're ready, he pulls a Ziploc from his pocket with two pieces of bacon in it. He puts them only on his burger. Okay. We sit down at the patio table to start eating. I finished my burger before he even started his. He did not stop talking the entire time. When we sit down, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a vial. It's about two inches tall with a cork in it. It's filled with black powder. He must have noticed me staring at it, flipping between if he was about to snort something strange or build some sand art. Then, all super casual, he said, Oh, I'd like to introduce you to my mother. I just stared at him for what felt like an eternity. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry or run. I like to bring her to any important event in my life. She also has ashes in this necklace I'm wearing and in this ring I have on and this half sleeve tattoo is for her. Now, mind you, I've lost too many people close to me and I don't judge people based on their grief cycles. We all cope differently and I respect that. But Homeboy brought a vial of his mother's ashes and set them on the table for our first date. I simply could not. He finally finished his burger and I made some excuse about having to clock in and finish some work at 9.30 p.m. He texted me before he even got to his car and told me, my mother really liked you. I can't wait to see you again. I told him I didn't feel the connection to him or his mother. Yeah, massive amount of red flags on this one, I feel. At the end of the day, you might be right. It might just be nerves. But there's definitely something a little bigger going on here, and this guy needs to kind of pull himself together a little bit. There are some benefits to using dating apps. You get to kind of know the person a little bit before having to be put in a situation of an awkward date. Unfortunately, it seems like our poster didn't catch the flags early enough on this one. My mom got to take the ultimate vacation and managed to screw over her boss at the same time. My mother passed away several years ago and this is one of her best stories. She worked as the head of the transcription department of a government agency. Whenever she would ask for time off, her boss would refuse. This went on for years and her leave just accrued. One day when she was about to turn 63 years old, she walks into her boss's office and tells him she's giving him two years notice that she'll be retiring. He's very confused as to why she's giving so much notice. Then she informed him that she'll be on vacation for the rest of her employment as she has two years of leave accrued and walks out of the door. This one is just a boss move. This is a heck of a way to quit. Yeah, I'm leaving and by the way, you're still going to be paying me for the next two years. I love this. My husband blames me for missing his business trip because he was too lazy to pack his bags himself. My husband travels for work every few months. He's irresponsible with time and counts on others to do stuff for him using the I'm tired excuse. He's the breadwinner by the way. He had a business trip and the day of the trip saw me carrying the laundry basket and said, Hey, can you pack my bag? I asked why he didn't do it the night before and he said he was up all night playing Fortnite. I asked why he can't pack now and he replied, I gotta go catch up with the boys before I leave the country. I said no and that he should do it himself. 
He asked why not, and I told him that I had to do the laundry, then cook for the kids, then help them with homework, then wash the rugs, then clean the messy bathroom, then the playing room, then work on my garden project. He stood there with his eyebrow lifted up as I went on. I suggested he stays home, pack his own bag, and help around till it was time for his trip. He didn't like my suggestion and complained about missing the boys and wanting to see them one last time and say goodbye before he leaves. He begged, but I said no. He then suddenly went inside the bedroom, I thought he was packing, grabbed his phone, keys and jacket, and rushed out. I just went about my day. It was 5 o'clock and he hadn't returned yet. I was concerned, thinking he had little time and still hadn't packed yet. He returned home at 6 o'clock, walked into the bedroom, and started panicking, asking why his bag wasn't packed and ready yet. I told him he should ask himself since he stayed gone for hours. He said he was counting on me to pack his bag, and even sent me a text hoping I'd eventually do it. I didn't see the text, and even if I did, I never agreed, so he shouldn't have assumed I was going to pack his bag for him. He got upset and started packing. His stuff was all over the place and he couldn't even find his papers. He was finally done and left. I then got an angry call from him asking if I was happy. I asked him what happened and he said he missed his flight, just like I wanted. He came home and lost it saying I cost him his business trip, which is supposed to earn him money and made him look unreliable and unprofessional, and compromised his work after I refused to do him this small favor and pack his bag. I responded that he shouldn't have hung out with his buddies literally hours before his flight, but he said he believed this was done spitefully to get him to sit home with me. I was shocked. No words, just shocked face. He called his friend saying his trip didn't happen, then turned to me and said thanks to me, then proceeded to ask where they were going to meet for dinner. He told me, No trip means I'll be home for the next couple weeks. Isn't that what you wanted? Great, we'll both now stay home and wallow in misery. God bless. Then walked out. Am I the jerk? He said I caused him issues at work. Should I have packed his bag anyway? Ugh, it sounds like you got a big man-child for a husband, honestly. Stays up all night playing video games, would rather go out with his friends than helping out around the house or getting ready for his big business trip, expects you to do everything for him and take care of him. I don't know, this sounds like the stereotypical lazy child of a husband. And if his argument is that he's the breadwinner because he does all the work and makes all the money, then this would fall under that category too. It's your big business trip and it's really important to make sure you're earning money you gotta make sure you're ready for it. Honestly, it sounds like these kinds of things happen a lot between these two, or the wife wouldn't have seen it as such a big deal and just taken care of it for him. It's really hard to side with the husband in any way here. I guess the only thing I could say is that maybe this could have been done in a way that wasn't quite so detrimental. If there's fallout for him and this as a result hurts the family financially, then there was a better way this could have been handled. But ultimately, I don't blame you for not babying him. I'm forever scarred from ever using soy sauce again. So I love soy sauce. I add it to almost everything as seasoning. Eggs, noodles, veggies, you name it. Today was no different. I made myself some ramen noodles with veggies, poured some good old soy sauce over it, and was munching happily on it. It was delicious. Life was good. Now the soy sauce I use has a small opening, and when you want to use it, you just tilt it and it pours out. You can unscrew the top off for refilling with soy sauce if you ever run out though. I always thought that it was very handy. No annoying cap opening or anything like that. Until today. It's still pretty hot where I live and there's fruit flies everywhere. You leave your food uncovered for one minute and there's a whole invasion of them on it. Now, as I was chomping down on my food, I suddenly see a movement inside the soy sauce bottle. One of these annoying little guys actually managed to squeeze through the tiny opening and is now flying around in there. Now, that's obviously disgusting. No one wants flies in their food. I had to get Get it out of the bottle so it wouldn't land in my next dish. So I quickly grab a cup and a sieve to get it out. I open the bottle and pour the sauce into the cup through the sieve. The little guy lands in the sieve, but something else lands in it as well. At first I thought it was just old soy sauce that had somehow clumped together. Oh how I was wrong. I take a closer look and I'm realizing it's a huge pile of dead fruit flies. I'm not kidding. It was like the amount of two tablespoons. And the bottle was pretty small. I gagged and immediately drained the whole bottle. I'm utterly disgusted and now have to live with the fact that I've been eating fruit flies for a good amount of time. I wonder if I can ever use soy sauce normally again.
Ugh, yeah, that is just disgusting. Lesson learned here, I hope, though. Just use something to cover it up next time or keep it in the fridge. I know we keep our soy sauce in the fridge. I feel like those little things that our poster's talking about is more used for restaurants and stuff like that, where they're constantly refilling it and cleaning them. Not necessarily for everyday home use. Mostly for this exact reason. My sister and brother-in-law set me up on a blind date and then accused me of embarrassing them when they knew I was not interested. I, 25-year-old female, have never been interested in romantic relationships. It just doesn't appeal to me. I'm very busy with grad school and work and I like being on my own. I have friends and a dog and that's honestly enough. I'm happy with my life. My family thinks this is weird beyond belief. And the pressure is ramped up now that even my younger brother has gotten married and I'm the only one left on the shelf. My older sister's husband has been offering to set me up for years because I'm too hot to stay single, whatever that means. I've always tried to refuse politely, but it's wearing thin. I was home visiting my parents this weekend and my sister invited me out to dinner at a new restaurant. It was an upscale place, so she said to wear something nice. I thought it was just going to be the three of us, but there was another guy in the car when they picked me up. He said he was my brother-in-law's friend Joe. Awkward, but not too unusual. We get to the restaurant and sit down and Joe keeps trying to make conversation with me, with my brother-in-law and my sister egging it on. And I finally joke, am I on a date or something? What's with all the questions? And my sister straight up says, yes, we thought you just needed a little push, so we decided to set you two up. I asked Joe if he knew about this and he admitted that my brother-in-law had told him he wanted to set him up on a blind date, but that he was glad he came. So I was the only one one who didn't know it was a date. I was pretty mad, but didn't really want to make a scene in the restaurant. So I finished dinner and gave really short responses to questions. So you're in the PhD program? Yes. What's that like? Busy. And the evening just stayed really uncomfortable and awkward. Joe apologized in the car and I told him it wasn't his fault, but he probably shouldn't let my brother-in-law set him up again and I wasn't interested in dating anyone. Apparently, he told my brother-in-law off in the car about making him look bad so that he didn't even have a chance. My sister's mad because I was rude and embarrassed them when they were just trying to help me out of my shell. My parents think I should have appreciated the gesture and given Joe a chance because you never know and want me to apologize. Was I the jerk? I'm gonna say this one isn't necessarily so black and white. Yes, your family should be respecting your wishes and that you're not interested in dating anyone at this time. But at the same time, they also want you to be happy. And they understand that having a significant other can make you happier than you probably realize. At this point, if you've never really had a serious relationship, then you don't necessarily understand what you're missing out on. And maybe they just wanted to show you that. Either way, at the end of the day, your wishes come first. You need to be a willing participant if there's actually going to be any progress made here, and that's something that they need to understand. My brother's girlfriend tried to ditch her daughter with me, so I threatened to call the police for abandonment. I'm a 30 year old female. I have a brother, Matt, 35, who's been with his girlfriend Lexi, 33, for two years. Lexi has a daughter, Bella, who's five. I have a daughter who's three years old. We all live in the same city, but Matt and Lexi live in the suburbs and I live in the city center, so about 45 minutes away. While I see Matt on average every three weeks, I only see Lexi and Bella every two to three months at my parents' house or for occasions and gatherings. Two days ago, I got a text from Lexi asking me to babysit Bella on Wednesday because she wouldn't be at school due to the teachers being on strike. She said that she forgot about the strike and had not taken the day off work, and had also made social plans for after her shift. I said no to babysitting and thought that was that. Yesterday, around lunchtime, I was having a skin treatment when one of my cleaners came to tell me that Lexi had dropped off Bella. The cleaner had answered the door and Lexi had said that she'd arranged to leave Bella with us, and the cleaner was unaware that this wasn't the plan and let her in. Lexi then left. I was livid. I immediately called Lexi, and after four declined calls and voicemails, I sent her a text saying that if she didn't return for her daughter within 15 minutes, I was going to call the police to say she'd abandoned her child. 
I find my husband to tell him what's going on and he calls Matt and tells him to sort this out. A few minutes after speaking to Matt, Lexi reappears. She marches straight into the den where Bella's watching TV, saying how evil we were for telling Matt and threatening to call the police. I tried to get her to come and speak in the study so Bella couldn't hear, but she just kept going on. I reminded her that she intentionally abandoned her child, but she kept going on about how she was desperate and needed to go on this social arrangement, and how she never has time to do anything. I reiterated that be that as it may, she can't just leave Bella with us when we didn't agree to it. Lexi kept bringing up excuses until my husband lost it and told her in no uncertain terms to leave. By this point, Bella was in hysterics and Lexi seemed totally frazzled. This has since turned into a big thing. Lexi has been posting cryptic things on social media about how hard it is to be a mother when people you expect to be there for you won't help you. I've received texts from her saying Bella is devastated to find out that we don't like her. I've now blocked Lexi. My parents have heard about it, and while my mother is firmly on my side, my dad said, was it really worth upsetting Bella when she was already there? Matt says that while Lexi was in the wrong, once she had left, we probably should have just kept Bella and argued about it later. Matt also thinks my husband owes Lexi an apology for intimidating her, which I don't think he does. So you guys tell me, who's the jerk in this one? I feel like this is another story where we've got a couple of jerks. There's no question that Lexi's in the wrong on this one for just ditching her daughter without there being an agreement. But at the same time, it kind of sounds like our original poster didn't have a lot of other stuff going on. Apparently, she was getting an in-home skin treatment while the cleaners took care of the house. Sounds like a pretty comfortable life. Meanwhile, it sounds like Lexi might be struggling and is just trying to find a little bit of time for herself. I feel like there could have been a little sympathy here and maybe you just look after the kid for the afternoon. And it also doesn't hurt to get a little bit closer to her considering she lives with your brother and could potentially be your sister-in-law at some point. And threatening to call the police for abandonment is just going overboard. At that point, you're just trying to start problems. So I can't really have a whole lot of sympathy for you. My husband thinks I'm the jerk because I took my stepson to see the doctor without his permission. I, 25-year-old female, live with my husband, 29-year-old male, and my stepson, 7-year-old male. My husband has full custody of my stepson, Riley. Riley has always been a late bloomer. When I started dating my husband, Riley was 5 and he still took naps even though most children grow out of them by then. When he turned six, he stopped needing naps during the day except when he was sick or did a lot of physical activity. Riley also has ADHD, and so do I. So I know that the hyperactivity can cause children to tire out sometimes. A few weeks ago, Riley started taking naps again for around an hour a day. He also began falling asleep on car rides. The length of time he napped kept increasing, and he now naps for three hours a day, meaning that he's asleep 13 to 14 hours a day. I usually pick him up from school and his teacher tells me that he's exhausted and yawning the whole day. I became extremely concerned and I told my husband that Riley needed to see a doctor, but he didn't think it was serious. He just figured that Riley was sleeping more because he was growing, but I was still worried. I admittedly don't know much about children as I'm the youngest on both sides of my family. But I spoke to my parents, in-laws, and searched online, and they all said it was weird. My in-laws did mention that my husband slept a lot as a child, but not to the extent that my stepson does. My husband still didn't want to take Riley to see the doctor. I decided to make an appointment for Riley anyway, and he saw the doctor yesterday. The doctor was very concerned, and he arranged a blood test for next week. And he also gave me a list of foods to cook for Riley to improve his energy levels. When I told my husband, he was peeved that I had gone behind his back about his son's health care. He wants me to apologize, but I believe I was acting in Riley's best interest. Most people I've spoken to have said that I was wrong because Riley isn't my son, but I'd like your guys' opinion. Am I the jerk? So from my point of view, you're essentially acting as this child's mother. You didn't do anything any other parent wouldn't. You're worried about the child and want to make sure that they're okay. It's not really your fault that dad isn't taking this seriously enough. At the end of the day, it doesn't hurt to at least take him to the doctor and see if maybe there's something wrong. 
It's not as if you made a serious decision regarding his health or anything like that. You literally just want to make sure he's okay. And it's really hard for me to argue that you're a jerk for doing that. I do understand that a lot of people are very protective of their kids, and this might be crossing a boundary of some sorts. But it's all in the child's best interest. I really don't think our original poster has done anything wrong here. At the end of the day, he's a young boy and he should have a lot of energy. So it's understandable that our poster would be concerned about his current situation. But let me know what you guys think about this one, because it is a bit of a gray area. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.